Welcome to Linda Mood Bell Radio. I'm Dave Hungerford. The Linda Mood Bell Learning Ability Evaluation goes beyond traditional assessments. Our comprehensive evaluation uncovers the specific strengths and weaknesses that impact reading, language comprehension, and math performance. With these valuable insights, we provide personalized recommendations for life-changing instruction tailored to each individual's needs. Take the first step in unlocking your student's full potential by scheduling an evaluation with us today. Visit lindamoodbell.com or call 800-300-1818. Today's episode is a conversation I had with Megan, a Florida parent, who doesn't live near one of our learning centers, so they had instruction for their daughter online. Here it is. So I'm Megan. I'm Channing Floyd's mom. She's seven years old. And a little bit about Channing. So she's a super vibrant uh, seven-year-old, loves everything to do with art. Um, She can make an art and a craft out of just about anything. Um, She oftentimes will find empty laundry detergent bottles and she'll make a craft out of those. So um, just very creative child, um, really loves anything to do with acting, singing, art, um, just your typical, your typical seven-year-old just has a lot of fun with anything and everything. So that's great. Does she have siblings? So Channing has two brothers. Um, one is 14 and one is five. So she is the middle child. You said middle child. So what was her academic career uh, been like? So Channing's ac- academic career um, started out during COVID. So um, she was a COVID child. She started kindergarten um, in 20. She would have started kindergarten in 2020, August of 2020. So um, it was started off great. Um, You know, she was a little behind and I think it was the typical COVID response. You know, she didn't really get to finish out VPK. Um, We're seeing that a lot of kids are behind. So there really weren't a lot of a lot. It wasn't there weren't a lot of red flags. It just was this is what we're dealing with right now. Um, kids are behind. We're going to get them caught up. It's going to be totally fine. Did um, she start off I, on computer? Did she have to do class from home? And so starting she, out or she, she did not. Um, she went to school in August or excuse me, they were a delayed start. So they didn't start till September, but we did go to school um, with the masks and everything. So um, she did quite frequently say she had trouble hearing her teacher or understanding her teacher because of the mask. Um, but again, everything was, they're all behind. We're working to fix it. It's going to be great. So we started to notice some typical dyslexia signs, um, transposing of letters, um, numbers backwards. And so when we asked um, the teacher about it, she didn't seem concerned. You know, she said this is very typical of kindergartners. We asked our pediatrician, same response. So we just, kind of went on about school and life that this is normal. This is, we'll work through it. About halfway through first grade, she was exhibiting significant signs, um, unable to repeat back letters, words. Um, She was putting forth a ton of effort for very little return just terrible grades, really struggling with phonics and um, comprehension were her two areas where we noticed some major challenges. How did she feel about reading? It sounded like she was fairly inquisitive and she would probably like to read, but how did she feel about it? That's yeah, so problem. reading was a huge challenge. In our in our district, kind of the standard is 20 minutes a night. Um, either being read to or reading to your child. And she was just very, very disengaged with reading altogether. Lots of phrases like, well, I just can't read or I'm never going to learn to read. I don't like to read. Did it change your personality a little bit? Yeah, it really did. 
her confidence started to go down a lot. She, her best friend is a super reader. (laughs) So that didn't help things that her best friend, you know, reads, I think at like a third grade level and in first grade, she was reading at a third grade level. So that was really challenging for Channing and um, continuously seeing the bad grades you know, she was like, I don't like school. I don't want to go to school. So that was really alarming to us because it was very different than the child we had seen kind of pre-COVID in her younger years at preschool and things like that. So your comprehension, it was a struggle too. Did she like it when you read to her and she liked to listen to stories and she, she did. So she did like when we read to her, You know, we would ask her sometimes throughout the reading, her typical sight words kind of in first grade, you know, oh, what word is this? What word is this? Anytime we got into that rhythm, you could see her start to become very disengaged. Just, well, I don't know. I don't know that word. If we would ask her to sound it out, it would, she would just create sounds that were not even letters in the word. So very frustrating from her perspective, obviously, but then as a parent, what are we doing wrong? You know, I I don't know what else we can do differently other than work with her. And um, shortly after the second half of first grade is when we got her dyslexia diagnosis, really started to put the pieces together on what that means and how she was struggling and what she was struggling with. And really looking to figure out as a family, how we could get her through that and get her to a place where reading was fun and, and she could get through her educational career without the frustrations that she was currently having. Did you go to like a private diagnostician or? So we did. Um, After speaking with her teacher, she recommended that we not be tested through the school, that their testing isn't as rigorous. And that if we wanted a true diagnosis, that more than likely we would have to pay for it. Insurance doesn't cover the testing of any of that. So we did go privately and and paid for that out of pocket. Yeah, unfortunately, school kind of has a vested interest in not getting kids into the IEPs and special ed and all the extra services that are a financial uh, burden, I know. So then you found out, how did the, how did the, the private party Describe dyslexia to you. I'm always interested in that because it varies so much in my travels from district to district sometimes, what it how it's defined. Yeah. So um they were very thorough in their reporting to us. I think we got like a 35 page report. <laughs> and we had a conference to kind of go through the report. I will say that she used a lot of terms and phrases that we knew nothing about. So that was a little frustrating trying to understand what some of these things meant. Her scores on certain levels and tests and different testing techniques. So that was a little frustrating. We ended up having to do quite a bit of research after that, but basically she kind of explained it to us as her essentially just not being able to connect the phonetic sounds and the words. So her decoding is where she was having the most issues. So when she would look at a word, it could be the, and she would sound it out as at, just no, no decoding ability whatsoever. And then somehow you found us. How did did that occur? Yes. So I was introduced to Linda Mood Bell from a fellow coworker, actually, who has a dyslexic son and um, was a part of the Seeing Stars program. And, you know, he told me, he actually overheard me at a meeting talking to another colleague about Channing's diagnosis. And um, he said, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I just heard you say your daughter was diagnosed with dyslexia. Have you heard of Linda Mood Bell? And I said, I, you're speaking of different language right now. I don't know what you're talking about. So he said, uh, you, you have to look up Linda Mood Bell. He said, we, my son is dyslexic. 
hated reading, hated school, hated all things education. He said, we went through the program and he said, it's, it's like we have a different child. Our child can read. He loves to read. His grades have improved substantially. He said, you have to check out Linda Mood Bell. So was, it, was this in Gainesville too? No. So he actually lives um, on the East Coast further down, um, like Jupiter area, I believe. We're about an hour and 30 minutes from Jacksonville and then about two hours from Tampa. So we're kind of right between both of the centers in Florida. There you go. And so how, so then you contacted one of our offices or? Yep. Um, so I, I filled out the information online and I was contacted by Kyle. Um, she reached out to us and was able to get the initial um, evaluation set up and kind of walked us through what that would look like and what it was looking for. And what, what was I, there? Probably were a lot of similarities between that and the diagnostic that you had that determined dyslexia. What, what were some of the differences maybe that uh, between those two evalu- evaluations? So I think the big difference was um, with the diagnostic evaluation, I think there were a lot more hands-on activities. Channing was in person for that. So whereas a lot of the Linda Mood Bell was a lot more focused on the decoding and comprehension, reading words per minute, that type of stuff. It was... uh, quite interesting when Kyle came back that the initial evaluation was going to be, you know, three and a half, four hours long. I was like, oh my goodness, you know, I don't know if she can stick this out, you know, with everything virtual at the time. Um, But we, we had Marceline for our um, evaluation and she was fantastic and really worked with Channing to take breaks when she needed and really guide her through the evaluation at her pace. I was really relieved when getting to view that and actually see how the process went. It really, I think, reiterated how it was going to work from a virtual standpoint with the Seeing Stars program. But I'm hoping that when they explained the scores and it was a little bit more clear and you weren't frustrated. Yes, it absolutely was. So That was um, Julie and Michelle um, were the ones who, from the Northeast Center up in Massachusetts, they went over everything with us in a very uh, layman's terms. You know, they really broke things down for, okay, in this section, this is specifically what we were looking for. You know, in this section, this is specifically what we were looking for and describing kind of the wheel and where she fell um, within the quadrants of the different the different sections that they were looking at. So it was definitely a much different um, experience than the private testing we had received in clarity and what they were actually looking for. Good. And so then you just, you decided to bite the bullet and get started. How did, how did that uh, go? We did. So um, it definitely, you know, I think some of the things I read online, people post about, Um, You know, I just, I don't know if that it's worth the investment and, you know, can I do it at home myself? Can, um, can I get secondhand materials? And I can just say that, you know, I think we were skeptical when we came on board because, you know, I think anybody would be just, it's, it's virtual. You don't really know what to expect. I think for us having the reference or referral with the gentleman that I worked with, helped ease that concern a little bit. But, you know, I think every child's different. How is my child going to react to, A, the amount of time per session in front of the computer? And then is she going to retain the information? So the first week or so was definitely a challenge. And uh, the four hours a day, five days a week was a lot. But then we got into a swing of things and it just, it just was what it was. It was the expectation. We picked her up at noon. She came home, she got ready. And the afternoon was Linda Mood Bell. So it's cool too. If you start making a little bit of progress too, that helps, you know, you see it right away. I mean, I understand it's, it's like, we've done this long test and we found things you're not good at and we're going to make you do it four hours a day, (laughs) every day. (laughs) You like if I had to go golf or something, but uh, they, you know, 
we really oversee to make sure that we try and be engaging. And now you, you didn't get into a, an office at all. Is that right? You, the whole thing nope. was completely online. Yep. We've never been to a center. When we initially met with Kyle, you know, she was like, we didn't just start doing online learning because of COVID. Like we've been doing this and we have a system in place. So I think that also really eased a lot of our concerns with it being a virtual um, learning situation to know that this wasn't y'all's first rodeo that you had been doing. And it wasn't just a reaction to COVID. Not, not a Channing end up with a, a good solid Boston accent. <laughs> the only not quite. I think they might've ended up with a little bit of a country accent from her. <laughs> so how, how did it go for you? I know she made progress, obviously. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think um, so. We actually overlapped. So we <clears> actually <throat> didn't start the Seeing Stars program until the first of July. So we got about five and a half weeks done before she had to go back to school. And so, you know, that was another challenge we were worried about was her having seven hours of instruction at school and then turning around and having to come home and do an additional two hours of instruction every day. But I think you know, really right from the get-go when she went back to school, we could instantly see there was massive improvement. Um, You know, she had her first phonics test, which in first grade, I don't know that she made above 75 on any phonics test. So 75 was like, yes, we, we got this. (laughs) Um, You know, she came home I think her first three or four phonics tests, she made a 100 on, which we just were floored. She left first grade reading about 18 words a minute at about 80% accuracy. When she had her first test in second grade, she was at about 60 to 65 words per minute at about 90% accuracy. So just that we were like, oh my gosh, like she doesn't even have to learn anymore. And we're thrilled. But as she completed the Seeing Stars program, she was reading about 75 words per minute at 100% accuracy. Wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. How's she doing today? Now we're down the road a little bit. Fantastic. So we have actually continued our journey with Linda Mood Bell um, with after school tutoring. Mm -hmm. Um, So Channing does tutoring twice a week right now. We are going to test out going to one day a week starting next month and just kind of evaluate if she can kind of keep up with school with the one day of tutoring. But we have seen just massive improvements with her confidence, with her grades, and most importantly, with her reading. She can read a paragraph now that doesn't take her 15 minutes. She understands what she reads and um, overall just is very confident in her ability at school and with what she's able to do. And did you do the visualizing and verbalizing at all, or was it the decoding that was holding her comprehension back? So in the beginning, Julie and um, Michelle had, they really felt like it was the decoding because her vocabulary actually tested substantially higher than her age. She was kind of off the charts with her vocabulary. So they really felt like it was the decoding and her being able to get kind of just getting the words out. And then her vocabulary, that would just continue to snowball once she got the decoding portion. And that is really what we've seen. So great. Great. If you're, if you're unsure, give it a go. Uh, we, we could not be happier with our decision to move forward with Linda Mood Bell and what it um, has provided our family in terms of Channing's confidence and just her ability to move forward in school with her educational career and not have the frustrations that we had. The, the tutoring itself now, so are they taking like her, some of her content from her classes mm-hmm. and applying yep. them? How does that, how's that work? Yep. So they review, um, so she has a phonics test every Friday. Um, so they review her um, phonics skill um, Monday and Wednesday, and then they will additionally do um, work through any reading homework that she has, which is typically comprehension based. Um, so they'll read the story. Um, if she either doesn't have homework or 
she, they moved through that pretty quickly. They have gone back and um, are reviewing, continuing to review sight words and move along in the sight word. You know, the number of words that she's done in the sight words. And then also they will read, um, she has a chapter book that she's reading. So they'll read a couple pages from her chapter book and then just review her comprehension of what they read. Oh, great. That's good. Mm-hmm. She's probably made some pretty good friends there in Boston and you know, they she, get really um, attached to some of the instructors. Well, it's actually funny when <clears> she <throat> ended the Seeing Stars program before we had decided to move forward with the tutoring she was like, wait, I'm never going to see them again. Like she was so heartbroken. So then we were like, just kidding. You're going to do tutoring. So I feel like eventually we'll have to make a trip up to Massachusetts to, uh, to visit everybody in person for sure. Yeah. It's a neat site. It's in an old, like remodeled home and it's a really cool new, Eng- very new England looking, looking place. That's awesome. But yeah. So, well, thank you so much for sharing that today. You did. That was great. A great, great story. Absolutely. You too. Thank you. And thank you for listening. Learn more about us at lindamoodbell.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We are Linda Mood Bell. <laughs>